A few weeks back, you might recall that we did a video on installing Lightspeed Broadband. The job was done quick and really efficient, but it did leave some questions. One of which was, how do I actually go ahead and make changes in your router? So today we have done a video covering exactly that. So let's get to a deep dive. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to head over to the Apple or the Google Store and download the Nokia app. Now the Nokia app is the app that is recommended by Lightspeed and you can see I've got it here on my phone uh, to actually configure your router. Um, they like this method as opposed to you logging into the router and getting that uh, more control over uh, the, the router. Uh, so they recommend using the app. And as you can see here, I've opened up the app and you can do a few things straight from the home screen. You can check your network health, you can do a speed check and you can do some work with some profiles which we'll cover in a second. But I'm going to go down into settings in the bottom corner there and uh, scroll up and click on advanced. So when you go into advanced, this is where you can do the main configuration of your network. And the first thing you can see there is DNS. So I can go into DNS now and you can see I've got the default DNS, which is the one uh, recommended by the ISP or set by the ISP, I should say. Uh, so I can click on there, click on custom. I can put some custom DNS in. There you go, click the tick, and we're all done. So I've just put some custom DNS in there now. I've just used Google's ones, okay, which some people might prefer. The next thing you've got here is port forwarding. Now, port forwarding is a, a, a tool or a service within your router that allows you to connect remotely to a service or a device inside your network. Um, is a, I've given it to you very a little bit simplistically, but Port forwarding is really useful for, for say, uh, gamers who've got a gaming server or if you've wanted to set up some sort of remote um, desktop access to your PC. So uh, you would go into port forwarding, create the rule for the port forwarding, which we're not gonna go into, and um, that's where you would do those sort of settings. Next on, we've got IP address reservation. Now, IP address reservation is really useful for when you want a device on your network to always have the same IP address or to be sticky. And the reason why that might be useful is, say for example, like a wireless printer. Uh, what we find is a lot of people who have wireless printers, we go out to them, the reason they say they can't print, the reason why they can't print is because their wireless printer has just been rebooted, it's now got a new IP address, and therefore the, comp the setup on the uh, computer is completely incorrect now. So, what we tend to do is we like to go into the router and set up a, um, a static IP address. And you would go into the uh, device, into the settings of the uh, Nokia app, select the device that you would like to make sticky and make sure it has the same IP address every time. So that's pretty much it that you could do from the advanced settings within the app. But we're gonna go back one step and head over into profiles now. So profiles is a, a really cool way of grouping devices, or sh I should say users, uh, into a particular group. Now, the most obvious one that most people will, will, will jump on would be for, say, the kids or the family. So uh, let's see what we can do with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new uh, profile. I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it uh, kids. Sorry, kids. And I'm going to select a device. We've only got the one device on our network, so I'm going to uh, select that. Okay, so now what you can see here is I have got a, a bunch of things that I can go ahead and set up. Um, so I can add more devices to that uh, group. I can set schedules. So uh, I could say schedule uh, maybe uh, when they, the uh, they users, or the kids in this case, can have access to the, the internet, uh, I accept bedtime rule, again, sorry kids, but you know, we, we were saying nine o'clock, internet's out. So that will turn off the uh, access for those devices. 
But the thing that I like, which I think is pretty cool, is this website blocking. Now, website blocking is really useful for you um, uh, blocking websites that you just don't want this group of users to be able to have access to. So I can go ahead, turn that on, click the plus sign there, put in a URL of a website. Let's go for Facebook, tick it. And now I have blocked Facebook. So by just doing that, I have blocked Facebook for anyone in that group or any devices in that group from connecting to Facebook. So they are the real sort of useful uh, tools that you can use within this app to actually uh, sort of do some do some work on your network to, to, to provide some, some security or to make things work a little bit more smarter. But uh, there is one more thing that um, I think is actually even better than, than, than that. There's a facility in here to add another wireless network. Now, why would you want to set another wireless network? Well, the first thing that springs to mind is where you have uh, devices in your network, like IoT devices, Internet of Things devices, and you do not want them on the same network as everything else. Now, IoT devices, uh, can by some are deemed uh, not very secure and you do not want them to be um, you know someone uh, uh, accessing the, the IT device and then finding them way onto your uh, other devices like your home computer and stuff like that so you stick all your IT devices on one network and then you'll stick all your other uh, devices on another network and you'll lock it down a little bit and create a little bit of security. So that's typically what you would do with having uh, a different wireless um, uh, network. So if we go ahead and click on wireless networks, you can see here that we've got multiband uh, 2.4 and five gigahertz. Now, most IoT devices are on 2.4 gigahertz. So I'm gonna set up an IoT wireless network on the 2.4 gigahertz. I'm gonna give it a name. There you go. I'm going to give it a real strong password. There you go. Super strong. Okay. I'm going to save that up. And there you go. I have just created another wireless network. Now, whilst that's um, provisioning, let me explain what will happen from here on in. It, what will happen it, when this is finished setting up? You can then go on a device, so that could be uh, an Alexa, that could be a ring doorbell or whatever, and look for that IoT device and then connect that device to that IoT network, okay? So what you're effectively doing is saying, I've got one network over here that is for my uh, all my IoT devices, which is away from my regular network where I have my computers, Maybe I have a, a NAS box or a server of some description or a gaming server and so on. And I don't want, I, I want them on one network where they're nice and uh, uh, safe. And I want the IoT devices on a completely separate network. So you're creating a little bit of a division between your networks, which again is really useful to be able to do. Um, we, we, we recommend setting up different networks um, for different use cases. Uh, so that, that is a useful little tool and I think that's really, really good. So as you can see here, it's done now. So if I was to just pull down and have a look on my networks, I should be able to see that IoT and there it is, IoT network. Okay, so I think that's a really cool uh, functionality of that app. Okay, so... <sighs> What's your thoughts on this app? Now, I think it's really useful. I think it has some real useful um, um, properties. I think it's really useful for uh, a small family and where we always advise uh, families to uh, implement uh, parental controls. At the end of the day, it's called parental controls for a reason. So we ask the parents to put parental controls on it's no point us doing it. We don't know what uh, you want, want on for your parental controls, but there are parental controls there that are easily manageable by a parent. It's done via an app. It's done on your phone. You don't have to get all techie about it. Um, so I think that has uh, that has its you know use case. However, there is a group of people that this app 
doesn't provide for. And they're the prosumers. So these are the professional users now of uh, who would you know sign up to a, a broadband service that gives you a gig speed up and a gig speed down. So that's fantastic. A, a gig up and a gig down. But I am actually a, a, a prosumer. I want to be able to have more granular control over my network. I want to be able to get in there and set up access control lists. I want to be able to go in there and say have uh, VLANs. I might want to have uh, complete segregation of my networks. I might want to have a guest network with a guest uh, a portal or something like that. So there's a, a, there is a subset of users that I feel that are not being catered for through this app, but it does have a very good easy and self-explanatory user interface so what do you think uh do you think it's over simplistic uh do you think it's enough um why don't you put your comments um below and we'll we'll dig into that uh, with your as time goes on my name is rob from rls computer services i hope you've enjoyed this video I hope it's been informative to you please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye bye for now